Um, my name is Brian, and I'm here to talk about testing. And at first, and people have probably seen this talk. Um, oh well, you're gonna see it again. So um, today I'll talk about BDD with RSpec, but I like to change things around, so let's just talk about BDD. Or really, let's just talk about testing for us normal people. And the real thing that I'm trying to get out to everyone here is you should be testing all the fucking time. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Um, today I'm gonna talk about test, or RSpec, I'm gonna talk about BDD, I'm gonna talk about evolution, I'm gonna talk about your feelings, I'm gonna talk about politics, and I'm gonna talk about testing all the fucking time, but most of all, what I'm talking about is compromise. So let me start this with a little bit of a story. And the Bible says, in the beginning, and in the beginning there was what? God. No, there was Pearl. <laughs> um, Pearl, is, Pearl is what I knew. And you see, this is what I used to know. I used to throw up on my keyboard daily, and that's what I came up with. And then after I got good with Pearl, I started with Java. And this is not my Java, but I wrote Java that looks just like this. So. One thing I want to say is test all the fucking time. So then I, te I fell into testing, and this is with um, good old JUnit, and I, and I thought I was doing real good here, but there was a problem. Wow, problem is I was writing bad, brittle tests, and the, my test had no organization, and I wasn't using any type of conventions. All my tests looked different every single time, and um, really I was just confused all over the place. So then, a couple years ago, there was this little Danish guy who looks like a cartoon character, came up with something called Ruby on Rails. And I can't use the logo because he says I can't. <laughs> so with Ruby on Rails, we got this whole little test directory, and there was, there was um, unit and functions and something called fixtures. But guess what? I was writing tests, and they were really bad. They really pissed my daughter off. <laughs> so I started writing more tests. And my evolution began. And I was writing tests, but I wasn't writing tests first. I was just writing tests to make, they were looking like my code, basically. So if I had one plus two, I had a test that said one plus two equals three. But remember this, test all the fucking time. So um, one day I discovered TDD. And I'm, now I'm writing my test first. But you know what? I'm still writing tests based on my implementation. And they were terrible tests. So, beginning of last year, I guess around January of last year, some really smart guys came up with RSpec. And I thought RSpec was cool. And I'm like, wow, this is hot. And I'm writing tests just like this. And I'm like, why is it so cool? It's because I'm testing with context. You know, this is real interesting. I'm actually able to, I'm actually able to actually put what I'm testing in a way that I can actually read it. But you know what I was still doing? I was writing tests with the brittle, funky syntax. You know, and it wasn't helping anyone. <laughs> so I, went, I sat and I thought about testing again with RSpec because I wasn't ready to give up on it. So I studied testing and I studied some more testing and I studied some more testing. And this is what I did. I actually became obsessed with it. I studied testing and I said, I'm going to figure out this testing thing. And really, I studied and I studied. And guess what? Behavior driven development, buzzword, eureka. I had a moment. I said, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to behavior, drive, and develop. Or so I thought. <laughs> so one rule that you should be getting out of this talk is you should be testing all the fucking time. And that's really what I'm trying to get here. So back to BDD. What I, what I came up to in my conclusion was is that this is a bunch of hocus pocus. It's just the same way. It's just a different way of saying what I was doing, all, what I was doing to begin with. So coding this way is uncomfortable. And there is an instant benefit. Anyone who's just starting with testing probably can attest to this. I probably can have like a, a prayer revival and you guys can come up here and tell me how bad this has been. So let's talk more about BDD. So what I've come up with is um, describe what the code should do rather than describing what it does. And whenever I realized this, I actually, it's like it was a moment for me. It's like I, I reached Zen. And I really do do this all the time. And you're, I'm going to say this to you. You probably say, I already do this. I'm going to say you don't. Because when you, when you start out testing, you don't do this. As much as you think you do, you don't do this. Because really, it's harder than it looks. So you're asking yourself, where do I start? And I'm going to say, test all the fucking time first. But then I'm going to say, you can start at the beginning. And so what I've done, because I like to center everything around me, I came up with the Bart Smarticus Guide to BDD. And there's four rules to the Smarticus Guide with the BDD. Get comfortable with TDD. If you're not writing your tests first, you're doing yourself, your company, your clients, and everyone else a disservice. You're killing babies, you're kicking kittens. 
So get comfortable with it. Make it your mission to do it all the time, even when it hurts. I don't care if you have a deadline coming up. Test first. Write your test first. Use Flexmock. Use Mocha. Don't use Mocha because it sucks now. But um, use RR, which I just learned about earlier today. Use that. Use something. And then think of your, app, your applications as object expressing behavior. We're, we're all Ruby programmers here. So you know we really are using OO. Use it to the fullest. Do not do procedural stuff in your OO. It sucks. And then also create examples of those behaviors. Remind yourself to do that always. All you're doing when you're writing your, your test is you're creating examples of how you want your code to work. So TDD is a muscle. You have to exercise it. And I know it's slow. And by the way, and this is just something that I tell myself, TDD equals BDD. If somebody tells you different, uh, they're just, it's a lot of hocus pocus. And actually, I pulled this quote from um, behaviordriven.org. BDD brings together TDD and DDD, blah. So let me talk about your feelings while you're going to be testing. And this is something that I felt first. First, I was sad, because you know, I was like, this sucks. And then I was like, patient, because I was like, this sucks. It takes forever. And then I had grief, because I wasn't getting any success with my test. And then I felt cromulent. I don't know what that means. But um, <laughs> then I had disbelief. And that actually is my wife. And she is disbelief that I actually took that picture when she wasn't expecting it. So, but then, and then it was the important part. I accepted it. I accepted that it would take a little bit longer, but my code would be better. And I'd only have to work on it once rather than have to go back to it three and four times. So I said I was going to talk about politics. Obama, Hillary. But really, I'm here to talk about painting the White House black. <laughs> and she's going to win. <laughs> and another thing is, you got to remember, test all the fucking time. And I can't say this enough. And really, this is what I want everyone to say. When they hear Ruby, I want you to say, test all the fucking time. Yeah. So I want you to know, our spec isn't the only way. It's a great way. You know, I started with it. And I'll tell everyone, I quit the day that I had to use our debug and, and our spec. It doesn't work. It does weird, bad things to objects that you shouldn't do. I wouldn't kiss his mother. I'm sorry. Um, but there's others. There's test spec. And then there's um, bacon. That was written by the guy who wrote rack. And then there's shoulda, which is really cool. You guys should investigate it if you haven't seen it yet. And then there's m spec. Those, Mer those Rubinius guys use it. I'm staying away. But, um, <laughs> but most likely, when you came into this, you weren't looking for BDD. What you were really looking for was something like this. We only write code to make our specs and tests valid. And I actually code this way to this day. I think that my output or my test or my specs or whatever I'm going to call them, I write, I write code to make my specs go green. That's really all I do. And when I think about it that way, it's kind of like a game. So I always want to make sure that everything is right. And that's, what, and that's what I'm saying here. You write your specs to drive your code. So what are we going to use? Do we use our spec? I don't care. Do we use shoulda? You know, that's up to you. Do you use the other new flavor of the month? You know, that's up to you. Which use what you works work with um, excuse me. Use what which what use what works best with you. And just remember, pick something better than test unit alone. And I know Nathaniel's here, so um, I'm gonna say sorry. <laughs> um, so this is where I am today. I TDD all the time, seriously. Um, my guys hate me because I sit down and the first thing I do is I go to my test directory. Or if I have to use spec, I go to my spec directories and I write a spec and I watch it fail. And this is something, and this is and this is actually was written a while ago. I should like R spec. R spec syntax is extremely cool, but I don't prefer it. But guess what I do? I test all the fucking time. But but I, I like assertions, so I assert that I don't have time for the quirkiness that RSpec gives me. And I'm not saying anyone else, it's just me. So I do have a current combo. I use test unit, I use shoulda, and I use RSpec story runner. But I got something to talk about in a second about that. And, and I said I was going to talk about compromise, and that is my compromise, because the RSpec story runner is very cool. I, I love where it puts me. But as of last night, I saw something. So we're going to stop the presses, and we're going to talk about a cucumber. Does anyone know what I'm going to talk about right now, besides this guy? I love this. I love this. So this is a video. And this is, and like I say, I have little, before I had mice, now I have little rodents, or little bees, and they're doing my typing for me. <laughs> and next thing they're going to do, they're going to go look in a directory. And what I've done here is, this is this new thing called Cucumber, made by one of the RSpec guys. So what I've done here is, is I'm showing you this new feature. Plain text features. I want to see a link for the Ruby Hoedown, and I want it to have that link, and I want it to have that title. 
So I'm running this new feature, and this is, this is gonna be the new hotness. You're gonna hear about this real soon. And what it did is that spec, it launched a browser using um, Waiter, and it made my test pass. This is the new hotness. And I wanna leave you guys with one thought. Do not try to in 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 uh, imitate the old master. Seek what they sought. And this is something that I live my life by, and I wanna leave you with one more thing. <laughs> and I just wanna tell you, I'm Brian Lyles. Um, I do this blog at Smarticus. Um, I have to tell people I work for Sourcefire. We make Snort. It's cool. It's open source. Network security. You guys should get on it. If you don't have this as your corporation, you should get on it. Come find me. And um, I test all the fucking time. Any questions? <laughs>